afternoon, everyone. My name is Ashley Brown, and I'm joined here by my colleague, Ashner Klitsch, to speak to you about how to manage sex and relationships during COVID-19. As a reminder, if you have any questions for us throughout this presentation, please leave them on our poll everywhere. Because most of us are spending so much more time at home right now, we're around family and partners a lot more than usual. Although we may enjoy each other's company, we all have our limits. Everyone needs time to themselves, which is difficult to find right now. One of the best ways to maintain relationship health is to establish and communicate your boundaries. It is sometimes helpful to write them down to make them more concrete. Some things to consider when determining your boundaries. Ask yourself who you want to be in the relationship. Do you want to be a carer, an equal partner, or something else? Boundaries also reflect our values. What is most important to you? Is it family, religion, work? Boundaries will be different in different relationships. You will have a different relationship structure with your partner than you have with your family. There are also different types of boundaries. A few examples of boundaries are time. How much time are you willing to spend with the person or dedicate to your relationship? How much time do you need alone? Topic. Are there certain topics that are off limits? For instance, you may want to avoid talks about religion, politics, or sex with parents and family to reduce anxiety and chance for conflict. Behavior, are there certain things you don't want to do, like act as a carer to your family or parents? Space, do you need somewhere where you can be intimate with your partner or a space to be alone? If so, try to establish this. I've been seeing a lot of interest around sex right now, especially since so many of us are spending so much more time with our partners. To quickly clarify, you cannot get COVID-19 through sexual contact specifically, but usually when you're having sex, your faces are close enough together to contract it anyway. So don't have sex with somebody who is not in your household or who is exhibiting symptoms. There is some research to, su to suggest that people's sex drive has either become unusually high or unusually low during COVID-19. It's great if you and your partner have equal sex drives, but this isn't always the case. There are a few ways to combat this. First, be aware that you can still have physical intimacy without sex. Perhaps you cuddle on the couch instead. Second, you can create a space or time in which you schedule intimacy. Research shows that people who put sex in the diary are more likely to report higher sexual and relationship satisfaction. Create a space away from the work and family environment where you can be intimate alone together. One of the best ways to make sex better is to talk about it. Talk about it honestly and frequently. Discuss barriers to having sex, like stress or work, but also discuss positive things. What worked well and what would you like to try? A huge part of relationship health, both in intimate and family relationships, is good communication. The Gottman Institute is a good resource for this. Thank you, Ashley, for your really nice summary on how we can set boundaries to create safer environments for us to increase the intim intimacies in our relationships. Currently, we may be sharing an environment with others more than we used to. Therefore, it is much more important for us to learn the right ways to express our needs. One way to achieve a good communication may start with knowing what would damage our relationships. More than 40 years of research from Gottman Institute shows us four types of behaviors will, which will damage our relationships. Here a nice video to summarize what are these behaviors. The following four research-based antidotes. There is hope for your future. Criticism attacks the character of the recipient instead of focusing on a specific behavior. The antidote to criticism is to talk about your feelings using I statements, then express a positive need. Contempt is an expression of superiority that comes out as sarcasm, cynicism, name-calling, eye-rolling, sneering, mockery, and hostile humor. Contempt is the greatest predictor of relationship failure and must be eliminated. The antidote to contempt is to treat one another with respect and build a culture of appreciation within the relationship. Defensiveness is self-protection through righteous indignation or playing the victim. Defensiveness never solves the problem and is really just an underhanded way of blaming your partner. The antidote to defensiveness is to accept responsibility, even if only for part of the conflict. Stonewalling occurs when the listener withdraws from the conversation without resolving anything. It takes time for the negativity created by the first three horsemen to result in stonewalling. But when it does, it can become a habit. The antidote to stonewalling is to break for at least 20 minutes, calm down, then return to the conversation. Spare your relationship from certain destruction. Learn more about eliminating the four horsemen by visiting our site. In summary, it's crucial for us to improve our communication through talking about our feelings with I statements, treating one another with respect, 
accepting responsibility and when needed taking a break, return, returning the conversation will help us to create warmer homes. So what else we can do? We can show compassion to each other and the best way to show compassion to someone is showing compassion to yourself. So what is self-compassion? Self-compassion is being kind to yourself in face of suffering rather than criticizing, blaming or pitying yourself. Kristen Neff has really nice practices in her website to increase self-compassion. And from research, we know that being self-compassionate will make you more compassionate and understanding to others and will increase, uh, sorry, will decrease your stress. Also, more compassionate people report increased relationship satisfaction and decreased burden of caregiving as they will be more likely to engage in self-care behaviors. Another way to increase the warmth in our homes is forgiveness. Forgiveness, if you don't have forgiveness, negative emotions takes up a lot of energy to hold and forgiveness can release these and encourage growth. Forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting, walking away from accountability or conditional harmful acts. Forgiveness is loving process of taking back the power and rebuilding our relationships. In high intense sessions like COVID-19, working on forgiveness and compassion is incredibly important because most of our relationships may have more conflict than usual and we know from research that stress leads to more negative emotion and more mistakes. So if you forgive each other, then we could create warmer homes. Thank you for listening to us today. We wish you all the best and we hope you that you stay safe and healthy. Thank you.